Remember when you were a kid and you had huge dreams for the future? Mine included being famous, having a pet sanctuary for unwanted pets, having two kids, and of course doing something to significantly impact the world. But what I learned is that our plans don't always work out. Life doesn't always go according to our dreams. I grew up in a town called Regina, home of the Saskatchewan Rough Riders. Yeah. Um, I thought it was huge when I lived there, but what I learned later is most of you think it's a very small place to live. But what I remember is it felt safe. And um, when two childhood friends in their early 20s got diagnosed with cancer, my world didn't feel so safe anymore. One of them I ended up marrying, his name was Ryan, and he'd been diagnosed with a brain tumor at the age of 23 while training to be a pilot. How's that for irony? He endured many treatments, surgery, chemotherapy, radiation, and then his cancer came back and he did them all again. He got a PET scan to assure us that the area remaining was just scar tissue. And when we got that assurance, we did what normal people do. We got married, we bought a house, we got a dog, and the best thing we did is we had a son. His name is Talon. When Talon was 14 months old, we found out that I had very aggressive, invasive breast cancer. We were shocked. Ryan and I switched roles, and we quickly decided that we'd both rather be the patient, because at least then we'd have control over what was happening. And Talon lived in whatever he wanted to most days, including his Nemo costume from Halloween, so even at Christmas, while opening gifts, there he was. My cancer came back, and Ryan's made a huge comeback, uh, but we didn't stop living, because that would have been letting the cancer take charge. So Ryan focused on teaching Talon some important things, like how to have the best lightsaber fight, and how to swing a golf club, and how planes were the most beautiful thing ever. In New Year's Eve 2009, there was a huge crash from my upstairs bedroom, and I ran from my kitchen to go see what was happening and found Ryan laying on the floor. And he was alert and pissed off because he'd woken up from a nap and lost all strength on the right side of his body. And a few days later, we learned that his brain tumor had moved to the stem, and we were out of options. And I thought I knew stress, but I didn't. And we were told he would lose his mobility within a matter of weeks, and the best thing that he could do was to move to a hospice as soon as possible. But of course, our focus quickly became, how do we explain this absolutely unfair future to Talon? Ryan's spirit in the last few months amazed us all. He continued to blog, well, mostly he talked and I wrote, and he wrote a book, and he decided to have a party, because why wait until after he'd passed away for everyone to gather together? He wanted to be there to celebrate his life. And he laughed a lot, because that is always our choice. It would have been easy for us to focus on cancer as the enemy in our lives, to see it as a negative, but in my experience, that doesn't help much. What it can do, however, is fuel the fight. The fight to live, the fight for me to be a good mom, no matter what was going on, and the fight for each of you to not let whatever is getting in your way to conquer your spirit every day. Ryan moved to hospice a month after we got the news. It was one of the hardest decisions we had to make, but it gave us our family back for a bit. He passed away on April 4th at 4 a.m., and the numbers 444 will always have a special place in our hearts and continue to appear in the exact moments we need to see them. Parenting alone after Ryan passed away was tricky. Talon spent a lot of time the first couple months trying to figure out how we could get Ryan back. So we had conversation after conversation where he asked questions like, if we got new medicine to the heaven guys and it worked, could we get our daddy back? When he was mildly satisfied that that wouldn't work, he focused on how we could get to him. So we had conversation after conversation going through scenarios about how we could get to heaven. But what I learned is that kids have an amazing resiliency and a strong focus on the here and now. So we had a choice. How should we move forward? It would have been easy to waste the days away in a blur, sitting in my pajamas, <laughs> laying in bed, at least for a while. But Talon would run into my room every morning, saying he was hungry and needing breakfast. He needed to go to preschool. He needed to go to soccer. He needed to keep me in my routine and me in his. He was my angel. Everyone goes through hard stuff. I wish I could take away our current or future pain, but I can't. We can't control the hard things that are going to get thrown our way but what we can control is how we deal with them. 
For us, our choice has been to dig back into our hard stuff and try and help others who will unfortunately walk in very similar shoes. So what did we learn? Don't sweat the small stuff, really don't. When you're stuck in traffic, you just got bad service at a restaurant or someone pissed you off by something they said, I promise you that in those last months of life or when you get told you have a life-threatening illness, those things, they just don't matter. In life, it can change in an instant. In the blink of an eye, your whole world can be turned upside down. So don't wait. If you're not loving what you're doing, change. If you're not completely surrounded by amazing people who make you a better person, why not? Life is all about perspective. Our family had to go through some very deep valleys, but now it seems the peaks are even more incredible. I always appreciate a beautiful sunrise because you never know if it might be your last. If you really think about what your enemy is, is it the thing that happened to you or how you're choosing to deal with it? We all have a choice. Everyone will have to deal with hard things in their lives, but it's up to each of us to look at what's thrown our way and how we're going to handle it. Will you look at it as the enemy? And if you do, will it fuel some negativity inside you? Or can you instead find some way to focus on what you can control and how you deal with it? What I've learned is that even if our plans don't work out and the fairy tales that we thought we were getting at some point in our lives don't come true, we have a choice about how we move forward and what other possible fairy tales we make room for in our lives. So how will you choose to live your one precious life? Thank you.